As you build up your operator interface using the VT SCADA Idea Studio, you may find that once in a while, perhaps, you might draw something that's not perfectly in the right place on the first try. Or you may decide that you want to move something around, change the size, just improve the, uh, the layout of what you've been drawing. Fortunately, the Idea Studio gives you a good selection of tools that you can use to make that operator interface just perfect. Let's take a look. Let's open the Idea Studio and take a look at the pieces that are here drawn here in the overview screen. Now, what I have just to start this demonstration is a number of widgets, several images, some pipe, some text, a few shapes. And if I want to select just one or two things out of this entire collection, well, let's take a look at my options. I could point at an object and click, and now I have that one object selected and I can work with it. If I want something else, I can hold down either the shift key or the control key, click again, and I can add things to the selection set. If I decide that I didn't want one of those objects, if I click on an object a second time while holding down the control key, what I'm going to do is to remove it from this selection set. All right, now that works fairly well, but isn't always perfect. Let's take a look at another option, which is that I can click on an empty space on the screen. Oh, by the way, after having selected several objects, what I've just done a moment ago to clear the entire selection set is to click on an empty spot on the screen, and that deselects everything that was chosen. All right, now this time what I'm going to do is click on the screen and hold the mouse down as I drag across. What you can see is a faint rectangle opening. Now everything that's inside of that rectangle and everything it touches are all going to be selected this time. That's a very powerful tool for selecting everything within an area. Let's remove that selection set and try again, but this time, instead of going from left to right, I'm going to open this window going from the right and dragging over to the left. And what will happen is that only those objects that are completely inside the window will be chosen this time. So the things that only touched are not going to be chosen. So if you go from left to right, you get a crossing selection. Everything that crosses and everything inside are all chosen. If you go from the right to the left, then it's only the things that are totally inside the window. Now, that's a very good technique to use when you've got a very crowded screen and you want to get several objects within an area. But even that isn't perfect because if you have something in behind on the screen, sometimes it's difficult to select these things without also clicking on something that's, that's there. So the next option that's available is to use the selection tools, which are in the home toolbar. So I make sure the home toolbar is open, I find select, and I can choose to select things based on what kind of an object they are. So if I want all of the text, I can scroll down, find text, and in one click, all three labels have now been included in the selection set. Now, if I wanted to add more things to the set, perhaps add the images, well, the first thing I notice is that my select tool isn't here anymore, because as soon as you select something, what happens is that the formatting toolbar opens up, or the formatting ribbon, for that particular kind of object. Now I could easily go back to the home toolbar, but if you were watching the first video, you saw that I added the selection tool to the, uh, the quick tools at the top of the uh, Idea Studio. That gives me access to my select tool right here. So just to review how I got here, with any tool in any toolbar, I can right click, and if it isn't already, I can add it to the Quick Access Toolbar. So, having done that, I can use this to add in all of the images, and now I have both kinds of things in my selection set. Okay, so now we have individual selection using the Control or the Shift to add or remove, Windows and Crossings, and the Selection menu to choose things based on their type. 
that covers all of the features that are available to me for choosing what I want to work with. Now let me clear that off just by clicking somewhere on empty uh, screen. And what I want to do now is to work with the objects that are here. Well, first off, let me clear my screen so I have something easy to work with. So I'm going to select all and delete. Now I'm going to drag just a couple of shapes onto the screen and see what I can do as far as alignment. As I draw these, you'll notice that a dashed line shows up to tell me when these things are aligned either center to center or an edge matching an edge. And that works both up and down and left to right. So that's a quick tool that's available to help you line things up. As for spacing, as I move this in close, at some point a blue arrow is going to show up and that tells me that I'm within a preset distance. How big is that distance? You get to choose it. Inside of the Snap Lines um, tool in the Home Toolbar, I can open up the Advanced screen and I can set my fixed space distance, which is measured in pixels. So make that as big or as small as you want for the built-in spacing between objects. If I weren't using the built-in space, but I want to add another object at the same distance that these two are apart, what I can do is drag this over, and as soon as I'm within the same distance as the first space, now I get red arrows to tell me that I now have equal spacing between all of these. So there's an easy way to make sure that things, that things are evenly distributed. If they weren't to start with, so maybe I've got sort of random spacing here, and I want to rearrange these things so that the spacing is equal, well, what I can do is to select all of them, and I can use my alignment tools in order to distribute these things horizontally with equal spacing. Now, what it will do is keep the outside two in the same place and move all of the selected objects in the center so that they all work out to the even space. Great. Now, oh, one more thing. What if I wanted everything to line up on a common base? Well, again, I can select all of my objects, and within my alignment tools, I can align everything on a center or top, middle, bottom, but which one? Ah, important thing to notice here is which of these three objects has the heavy blue rectangle around it? That one will be the base object that everything else will match. So if I choose to do an align bottom, they don't all move down to here. This has the heavy blue, so that is going to be the basis for all of them to move to. Now, what if that wasn't the one that I wanted to be the base? What if I did want them to move down to the bottom? I've just done the undo to clean that up. What I do is to unselect the bottom and then reselect it. The last thing you choose in every case is always going to be the anchor object for everything else to match. So now when I choose a line bottom, everything moves down to match this one. I can also match sizes. Let's clear the selection. And what I'm going to do is to take this object and I'm going to shrink that down and take that one and make it big. What if I wanted all three of these objects to have the same size as this one in the middle? Well, what I can do is to choose this and that and that being careful that that's the last thing chosen, so it's the anchor. And now I can do a match, and I can match any property of any object. So I can make them match in size, or maybe just width and height. I can also make things match in colors or in fonts. This is going to be great when you have num numerous labels, and for whatever reason you used a different font, you can now make them all consistent with just one click. In this case, I'm simply going to match the size, and now everything resizes to become the same size as that one. Now, finally, as you're moving things around, it might be a bother to have to select all three every time. So what I can do is do a quick group. And I'm just going to do a simple group, not a widget, 
but that groups things together. There's no prompts, no naming. They just now have this association so that they're treated as a single object. When you're done with it, I can now right click and in the group, I can ungroup them. And I now have my original objects back again. So there we see lots of tools to make it very easy to work with what you've drawn and set that user interface up just perfectly for your operators.